Archaeology is awesome. And I find it especially awesome when archaeology finds physical evidence or proof of historical events that might otherwise seem to only exist on paper, or in the minds of certain cultures, or when archaeology challenges the status quo beliefs about our own history. So this episode, I want to tell a famous story about a town in the Middle East whose name is still relevant and present in our language and culture to this day, but for which little physical evidence has existed. It all happens in the book of Genesis, chapter 19. That evening, the two angels came to the entrance of the city of Sodom. Lot was sitting there, and when he saw them, he stood up to meet them. Then he welcomed them and bowed with his face to the ground. My lords, he said, come to my home to wash your feet and be my guests for the night. You may then get up early in the morning and be on your way again. Oh no, they replied. We'll just spend the night out here in the city square. But Lot insisted. So at last they went home with him. Lot prepared a feast for them, complete with fresh bread, made without yeast, and they ate. But before they retired for the night, all the men of Sodom, young and old, came from all over the city and surrounded the house. They shouted to Lot, Where are the men who came to spend the night with you? Bring them out to us so that we can have sex with them. So Lot stepped outside to talk to them, shutting the door behind him. Please, my brothers, he begged, don't do such a wicked thing. Look, I have two virgin daughters. Let me bring them out to you, and you can do with them as you wish. But please, leave these men alone, for they are my guests and are under my protection. Stand back, they shouted. This fellow came to town as an outsider, and now he's acting like our judge. We'll treat you far worse than those other men. And they lunged toward Lot to break down the door. But the two angels reached out, pulled Lot into the house, and bolted the door. Then they blinded all the men, young and old, who were at the door of the house, so they gave up, trying to get inside. Meanwhile, the angels questioned Lot. Do you have any other relatives here in the city? They asked. Get them out of this place, your sons-in-law, sons, daughters, or anyone else. For we are about to destroy this city completely. The outcry against this place is so great, it has reached the Lord, and he has sent us to destroy it. So Lot rushed out to tell his daughter's fiancés, Quick, get out of the city, the Lord is about to destroy it. But the young men thought he was only joking. At dawn the next morning, the angels became insistent. Hurry, they said to Lot, take your wife and your two daughters who are here. Get out right now, or you will be swept away in the destruction of the city. When Lot still hesitated, the angels seized his hand and the hands of his wife and two daughters and rushed them to safety outside the city, for the Lord was merciful. When they were safely out of the city, one of the angels ordered, Run for your lives and don't look back or stop anywhere in the valley. Escape to the mountains, or you will be swept away. Oh no, my lord, Lot begged. You have been so gracious to me and saved my life, and you have shown such great kindness, but I cannot go to the mountains. Disaster would catch up to me there, and I would soon die. See, there is a small village nearby. Please let me go there instead. Don't you see how small it is? Then my life will be saved. All right, said the angel. I will grant your request. I will not destroy the little village. But hurry, escape to it, for I can do nothing until you arrive there. Lot reached the village just as the sun was rising over the horizon. Then the Lord rained down fire and burning sulfur from the sky on Sodom and Gomorrah. He utterly destroyed them, along with the other cities and villages of the plain, wiping out all the people and every bit of vegetation. But Lot's wife looked back as she was following behind him, and she turned into a pillar of salt. Abraham got up early that morning, and hurried out to the place where he had stood in the Lord's presence. He looked out across the plain towards Sodom and Gomorrah, and watched as columns of smoke rose from the cities like smoke from a furnace. But God had listened to Abraham's request, and kept Lot safe, removing him from the disaster that engulfed the cities on the plain. This is, of course, the famous story of the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah from the book of Genesis. Sodom being the root of the word still used today, sodomy. 
The story you just heard, in case you aren't familiar with it, happens after three mysterious strangers have an encounter with Abraham. Abraham, being the generous and humble person that he is, invites them into his home to share a meal. He soon discovers that they are not mere mortals. Abraham is informed of the impending judgment against the city of Sodom, where his relative Lot resides. Abraham pleads with the Lord to spare the city, even if only a few righteous men could be found. When the angels arrive at Sodom, they encounter Lot, who, like Abraham, and unlike the native residents of Sodom, shows them hospitality, offers them a place to stay and food to eat. The residents of Sodom are in the horrific habit of sodomizing strangers. They demand Lot hand these two angels over to them. Lot defends the angels and offers the crowd an insult as well by offering them his two virgin daughters. It's also a last-ditch offer to keep the mob from really screwing up by attacking a couple of angels. But the mob isn't having it, and they make a move to break down Lot's door in response. And having seen and heard enough, the angels act, blinding the mob and telling Lot what he needs to do to escape and survive the coming judgment against Sodom. Sodom, along with Gomorrah and its outlying villages and the whole of the land in the plain, were destroyed with burning sulfur and fire from the sky. Ever since it was written, this account has served as a warning against cultural decay and sin, which ultimately leads to destruction one way or another. But as with any big story in history, especially ancient history, we are often left with very little in the way of physical clues. Depending on how you view the world, this makes some events and views easy to dismiss if they don't align with the ones you already have, while others you might embrace wholesale, even though they have a similar amount of evidence. For example, how do you feel about the chronology of ancient Egypt, Gobekli Tepe, or the phrase, history is determined by the victor? How often does your most hated politician distort events, even ones that only recently happened? How often is evidence obscured, destroyed? Now go even further. How often throughout history are entire populations or cultures erased through genocide and persecution? Whether it's the Roman conquest of Carthage, the Dacians, countless Mongolian invasions in the East, or the plight of the native populations of the Americas as more technologically advanced peoples moved in. How much information was really lost? So it caught my attention and that of many others as well, when an article was published in Scientific Reports titled, A Tunguska-Sized Airburst Destroyed Tal El Hammam, a Middle Bronze Age City in the Jordan Valley near the Dead Sea, approximately 3,600 years ago. Links to all this will be posted at lorenlegends.net. The timing is about right, the location is spot on, and even the description of the method of turning this once thriving community into a heaping pile of rubble and ash, is correct. Could this be the biblical Sodom and Gomorrah, or one of the villages just outside? First, let's consider the Tunguska event of 1908. Tunguska is in eastern Siberia, and in 1908, the largest meteor event in modern history happened. Except it didn't hit the ground. The meteor exploded in midair at an altitude thought to be between 3 and 6 miles up, and the resulting shockwave flattened some 80 million trees in the heavily forested region. Even without hitting the ground, the seismic shockwave the airburst induced in the ground measured a 5.0 on the Richter scale and was detected as far away as Washington, D.C. To put this in explosive terms, this was about 12 megatons of power. For reference, the atomic bomb dropped on Hiroshima was a mere 15 kilotons. Tunguska wasn't just one single blast, though. Subsequent smaller blasts are thought to have occurred, creating just enough follow-up energy to extinguish any fires that resulted from the initial blast. And to put that in perspective, the alleged event that leveled what we today refer to as Tal El Hammam was 1,000 times more powerful than the Hiroshima bomb, which would put it at like 15 megatons. There's more we could say too, and thankfully for us, video. 
In the case of the Chelyabinsk meteor impact in Chelyabinsk, Russia, in February 2013. Again, links at lorenlegends.net. In this instance, you can watch and even hear the meteor explode, shattering over a thousand windows and injuring just as many people, with the remaining fragments of the meteor making relatively small impacts on the Earth below. The Chelyabinsk meteor exploded with an energy of a mere 470 kilotons at an altitude between 12 and 15 miles above the surface. So how about that 15 megatons at presumably a much lower altitude? For reference, 15 megatons is equivalent to the U.S. Castle Bravo nuclear test, the largest ever set off by the Americans. The hellish video to that can also be found at lorenlegends.net. The ruins of Tal el Hammam show us the results. Melted bricks of city walls that were four meters thick. Melted metals like gold and platinum. Shocked quartz. Experimental data suggests the temperature exceeded 2,000 degrees Celsius. For us Americans, that's 3,632 degrees Fahrenheit. That's a little bit more than one-third the surface temperature of the sun. Moreover, some 120 regional sites are said to have been abandoned after that event, as the resulting hypersalinity of the soil made it inhospitable for the next 600 years. Salt, also referenced in the biblical account. The timing of this event? Right around the time we might expect Abraham to have lived, and a few hundred years before the time of the Exodus. In my mind, this is very, very likely the biblical Sodom. Sure, there will be arguing about a few years here and there, mostly by the typical folks you might expect, desperate to dismiss any sort of ancient text, but the similarities in such so far are much too hard to not at least consider. So if this was Sodom, what remains is the story of the supernatural warning and rescue. What do you make of that? Well, do not forget to show hospitality to strangers, for by doing so, some people have shown hospitality to angels without knowing it. Love your neighbor as yourself. Thanks for checking out Lore and Legends. If you haven't, be sure to click subscribe here and on the YouTube channel. And as always, a transcript and some additional links and images and videos to go along with this episode can be found over at loreandlegends.net link in the episode description. That's all for this episode. See you next time.